بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله with the grace mercy and love of Allah سبحانه وتعالى we continue our da'wa on life questioning program from Post Islamic Psychology Center and Khalifa Education Foundation and we are giving you ideas and training in Islamic motivation coaching mentoring counseling and a vibrant way of life in the 21st century inshallah once you understand the fullness of Islamic Sharia and the fullness of Islamic psychology all right and it is very important that I am giving this message this recurrent message that humanity is at a knife edge yeah? we are coming to either a full destruction of this modern civilization which I have given to you the idea because of the ontological basis of materialism as a basis of life and a basis of everything the basis of progress the basis of living the basis of belief system and so on so we are at the knife life age now because of materialism for the last 300 years we are actually getting into a situation where this destruction of this human civilization is very very near all right because this dominant 300 years of worldview of materialism brings about a destruction all right so it could be the last call eh, now because as i mentioned to you in the various uh, videos in the past the last call is basically allah has given this opportunity for this civilization to change to take its course to move away from the destructive uh, paradigm of greed of oppression of injustice of just uh, you know uh, going treating this mother earth or this good earth as a garbage dump so what we do now because we are treating this as a nothing uh, we are just pumping the co2 level at such a high rate that temperature is rising and when temperature rise uh, species of insects and uh, bacteria even viruses coral reef will start dying now we are in the process of the six mass extinction and the heat sink that we have pumped into this earth because of the fossil fuel industry for the last 150 years has will take its own course how severe how bad it is wallahu alam only allah knows but if you read all the material by the climate scientists more than 25000 of them and the summary report is the inter intergovernmental panel on climate change the consequence is dire now we have the highest temperature ever three degrees globally just this uh, august so very very high all right so if that happened then many species cannot adapt and when they cannot adapt they will die many plants cannot adapt when there is extreme heat and extreme drought and extreme cold when that happened then we will have a mass extinction of species and a mass extinction of our food source so we will have a mass extinction of humanity like it or not where are we going to get our food when the temperature rises four degrees because at four degrees it will be almost like a end of civilization all right at six degrees we will be gone at eight degrees everything is gone but the heat sink that we have put into this co2 into this earth and the heat absorbed per kilo hour in the surface of this earth has gone beyond uh, the threshold eh? that is my belief and that is a belief of a lot of climate scientists so this ongoing saga of the destruction of our own human civilization according to ipcc we have 10 years hopefully that they are right but according to some scientists we have only about two years so whichever is their view uh, this is the last call so at this moment critical moment in human history we must bring humanity away from the materialism to idealism all right so if we have non-muslims who are now perpetuating the idea of idealism in terms of that this world is a is a conscious world even it is panpsychism or is a pantheism whatever is the ideological framework all right we must bring about for them to understand the mind of God finally because in Islam everything is coming back to the nature of the creator who created this universe and there must be a purpose and meaning in life so 
if they move into this then we we will have almost similar ideas all right even though our definition of allah or god will be slightly different they have this idea of the mind of the or for example like uh, a lot of this group of people uh, they use the word uh, the word okay conscious or the cosmic mind uh, or the mind at large the mind at large they don't they they, they have this form here they have this uh, uh, absurdity to call God uh, but some of them are now calling the mind of God Alhamdulillah that's good when you talk about the mind of God you talk about absolute consciousness then we can talk about why uh, from the perspective of revelation why we are here because if you talk the mind of God you talk about existence that all existence is even material things is uh, coming from the rim of mental or the rim of consciousness so consciousness is a basic building block of our existence for example like panpsychism consciousness is like space-time so consciousness plus space-time is the building block of our existence in terms of the material things that we see okay fair enough that is the panpsychism view of building blocks like lego that you put this plus this plus this then you have a conscious human being okay but that doesn't solve the hard problem in, 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 in totality because you must have if you say that this building block this lego block who is the one who put this building block together so then you have to go back to again you got to go back to the cosmic mind or the cosmic consciousness or the absolute consciousness or the mind at large or whatever uh, terms of definition because then you have to acknowledge that is a supreme you do not you do not want to use the word being supreme consciousness but beyond supreme because consciousness is an attributive aspect that's why in islam ilmu kalam uh, and the metaphysics of islam later on i'll go into quite very detail into this for example like our ilmu kalam all right in uh, this pro prolegomena to the metaphysics of islam by said nakib alatas okay he is the, he is an old man now alhamdulillah he's still alive but his worldview is a very traditional worldview which he's extracted and he's tried to combine it with modern understanding of consciousness all right so uh, i will go through this detail and um, inshallah i'll dissect one by one chapter by chapter part by part as much as i can to go into our book that islam heart of love because he gives a very succinct very comprehensive worldview that is that can actually in terms of understanding overcome idealism so idealism is very close to our uh ahli sunnah wal jamaah world view eh? but as i say it depends what vi what variant of idealism they, that, that they are bringing the sub sub okay sect or sub idea ideas of idealism which i'm also going to elaborate as we go along eh? but what is important is that we have this great scholar, Alhamdulillah, his work is uh, 30 years ago, all right, he's an old man now, but who is carrying his work, all right, who is carrying up the understanding of the metaphysics of Islam vis-a-vis -vis this 21st century in terms of the last call in terms of our human civilization, what would be the, 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 the role of Muslims in this situation, why God created us and what are the situation in which we can uh, go about in line with the understanding of the nature of why we existed all right so consciousness will always bring to this question of why we exist and in islam we have the answer so inshallah in our uh, video and book inshallah islam heart of love will bring about that idea also from my teacher uh, maulavi babu sahib uh, I, st I studied him and his book on the tenets of islam he gave the whole range of the metaphysics understanding we service the ontological uh, or the or using the epistemology of al sharat and mutridi and he uh, used the as a basis a very well known book that is used in all madrasas that is kitabul jawharul tauhid eh, by imam uh, burhanuddin al qani right so this is his Taking the, the verses from uh, the words of, of Imam Nakani, he explained it from the perspective of contemporary understanding of 
how we are going to understand the metaphysics of Islam from that perspective. Huh? So we have these two and I have mentioned to you uh, before he passed on, uh, my teacher has passed on, he has passed on and so may Allah be pleased with him for all these great people, those who have passed on and may we set a fatiha for them. Uh, my own mentor and friend, Professor Muhammad Mahdi Jenkins, he, he also has passed on. All right. His work is on psychology because he is the protege of B.F. Skinner, Skinner, the father of modern behavioral psychology. He was the protege and he brought about this model uh, about the nature of consciousness long ago in the 60s. But that was rejected by the behavioralists at that time because behavioralists, as you know, they, they take the materialist uh, uh, idea, anything about consciousness, anything about uh, nature of self beyond the physical realm is rejected. So he was, uh, his story is very colorful, he was rejected, left his uh, lectureship in the university, became a hippie, all right, joined a Buddhist group, then joined Hindu group, and then uh, left all those groups and searched the meaning of truth, and finally became a Muslim and uh, developed the Khalifa method and post Islamic psychology as a way forward for the Ummah to face the challenges of the 21st century. So, I'm trying to fuse these three because uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me good health. I do not know how long I'm going to live, but at least if I can record this idea of how we can bring about the Ummah towards a beautiful Ummah. And there are many brothers and sisters who are moving in the same direction. Eh? I would like you all to go through, for example, Professor Khalid Abul Fadil eh, from UCLA, America, The Search for Beauty and the Beauty and Reason in Islam. All right? So he has written many, many books. And if you look at his book, it is his sense of responsibility to bring the Ummah towards love, beauty, compassion, mercy, which is the deen of Islam. But we have lost our way. We have gone into sectarianism, we have gone into extremism, we have gone into uh, neo-slavery, we have gone into all kind of nonsense. And, and we have gone into Salafism, we have gone into so many, many of these things that is actually bringing us to the edge of our own uh, disaster in terms of a belief system. What about our younger people? People our children, our grandchildren, how they will look at us? Would they look at us as extremists? Or would, would they look at us with the eye of mercy, of love, of compassion, of beauty, of peace? So we have to reclaim that position. And uh, I, I recommend, all right, Khalid Abu, Abu Fadil, Reasoning with God, that is his book. This is his website. You can go to his website, all right? Uh, that is... Uh, searchforbeauty.org eh? www.searchforbeauty.org there's a lot of material and that is the kind of Islamic movement that we need to bring about eh? to shift in this very critical period of humanity the last call for humanity is also the last call for the Ummah we have no time to talk about Talibanization or you know, ISIS and all this we have no time for that this is a critical period for which we have to reclaim our soul. Alright, what if Allah does not permit this civilization to continue in 30 years? Then within 30 years, then everything will fall apart. Uh, the civilization that you know, the handphone that you know, the internet that you know will all fall apart because there's no food. Billions of people will be migrating. Where? Sea, rise, sea level will be rising. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to run? We have nowhere to run but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if that happened, eh, if we prepare ourselves now, if that calamity is going to be a small, uh, what do you call it, qiyamah, uh, we have to go through it because of the evil that we have done, the facade that we have, the corruption that we have done on earth, the destruction that we have done on earth, are all un-Islamic. This is in the Quran and I'll, I'll give you more details of that as I develop this Islam heart of love of how we can shift from that destructive way of life to a balanced, integrated way of life based on Iman, Islam and Hassan, based on love, based on beauty, based on realization of the grandeur of the goodness that Allah has given us and living in goodness, knowing our duty. Because we have one whole chapter on stewardship eh, in our post-Islamic psychology because that's the only way to change the mindset of the Ummah. The psychology of Duma must be a psychology of stewardship. The psychology of being the Caliph of Allah. 
and expressing and living the caliphahood on onto ourselves always eh, knowing the very fundamental idea of being the caliph of allah our great scholars have mentioned and we we have distilled it into three major ideas that if we follow that then you follow the deen eh? basically is always strive to make yourself good that means ourselves eh? our family the closest then help others to be good that means the society is good and make this world good clean and beautiful are we doing that or are we destroying this earth pumping more co2 to this earth or are we planting more trees so the easiest thing we can do is maybe plant more trees do good things do good deeds helpfully hopefully we can avert this climate disaster and avert the destruction of the civilization that we know that we can move from this so-called modern civilization to a new postmodern holistic civilization based on revelation or if they are not going to revelation at least based on idealism and a comprehensive way in which we can help each other to make this world a better place for all living creatures and all uh, resources on this earth and most important to live as brothers and sisters as human beings in beauty in love in mercy in compassion uh, knowing and striving to fulfill our role until we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that we are his khalifa on this earth all this striving to make ourselves good helping others to be good and making the world good inshallah <laughs>